Welcome to another episode. In this episode, we're troubleshooting this Honda Civic. It's got the uh, D17 with a five-speed manual. It's making all kinds of crazy clunky noises. Sounds like the wrist pins on the pistons are about to fall apart. But when you push the clutch, it gets quiet. So I'm gonna go ahead, tear it all apart, and let's see what's broke. Here's a part number for the flywheel bolt. It's a Honda part 90011-PM0-000. We got a new flywheel from Rock Auto, 1672-23. This came as a kit with uh, this clutch, 08022. The kit also came with a master clutch cylinder and a slave cylinder. You're gonna need two quarts of Honda manual transmission fluid. Step one, we're gonna pop the hood. To get the transmission out, we gotta unplug all this wiring and sort of fold it over up in here to get it out of the way. So you're gonna have to get your factory intake off and uh, that'll be step number one, really. And then get all this wiring unplugged, slid over, tied up with zip ties over here. The shift linkage bracket, you have three bolts, one on the back, and then two over here on the front. You have cotter pins holding the linkage to the transmission. Pull those out and unhook the linkage. Take this battery tray out. You got four 12 millimeters. You just need to loosen the ones under here. Take these two on the top out and then the tray will slide up. When you're looking for the bolts for the starter, you have there are pretty much two of them directly apart from each other. And then you're going to have to take the wire off of this stud, and there's a clip wire that goes onto this. First part of doing all this, obviously we got to get the axles out because that goes into the transmission. Use a 32 millimeter, pop this out after you undetent this piece from this groove. Use a punch or flathead screwdriver and a hammer or something and then take this 32 off now I need to remove the spindle from the control arm so that I can pull this out of the hub pull the hub forward get the axle out pull the axle out of the car on both sides these things were super loose like 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 that <laughs> crazy take this 19 millimeter off jack up here pull this control arm down use a pry bar go in here pop the axle loose we need to remove this bracket you got two bolts here and then one up there and one right there take off the dust cover with a 10 mil there and a 10 mil there we got 12 millimeter bolts with these springs that hold the exhaust on so take off these two in the back, got the same thing, take off these two, and then put this exhaust out of your way. We need to remove this motor mount. So this one has a tab, so don't undo this one. It's going to be this 17 on the other side, and then you're going to have a 17, 17. You're going to remove these two bolts, and... The one that goes to the engine block right here. On the rear, we need to get this bracket disconnected. You're going to remove these three 17s and this one from here. And then the bracket will just be free floating. You're not going to be able to get it out right this second. When you're disconnecting the transmission, you're going to have one bolt here above this axle. And then the rest are going to be on the other side. You have one tranny bolt here, one above this clutch fork, 
two up top. Everything was horribly loose. I think this flywheel center part is damaged now because it seems like it's coming apart. One of these has a bunch of scrape marks on it. So that was from rubbing against the clutch disc. So yeah, we shouldn't use shouldn't use any of this putting it back together. This is pretty this is pretty bad too. So you pound in the pilot bearing from the rear of the flywheel. I just set the flywheel up here. So the pilot bearing also sits in the crank to align it vertically and horizontally. It centers this onto the crank. And then I just put a one of the bolts in loose to hold it while I put Loctite on the other bolts and put those in. Then I'll pull this one out, put Loctite on it, and put it back in. Put a decent amount of blue Loctite on here. And then we're going to put them in. Now you're going to use this tool to hold the flywheel from spinning as you torque those to 90 foot-pounds. Spray the flywheel with brake cleaner and wipe off any excess to make sure you get this oil protecting film off. Use the uh, alignment tool that comes with the kit. You need to make sure it'll say transmission side. Uh, sometimes it says flywheel side on the other side. This one says T slash M side, transmission side. So you're going to put this guy through here like so. Then we're going to take this under the car. You're going to put that in the hole from the pilot bearing. Now that it's sort of sitting here, we're going to grab the pressure plate now, put it on, line it up with the dowels, then put in the bolts for that hand tight. Use brake cleaner and clean the mating surface here so there's no oily film on it. I have these first two bolts in barely hand tight just enough to put some pressure on the on the friction disc and this is how loose this should be the alignment tool you should be able to pull it out with your pinky very easily and that means that the splines and the pilot bearing are perfectly straight so now when I go to put the transmission on it should slide right in because everything's perfectly lined up now I'm gonna grab the rest of the bolts, I'm going to put some blue Loctite on them. As you're tightening down these bolts, don't go in a circle. You're going to go in a star pattern. So you're going to, and you're only going to go a little couple threads, couple threads in a star pattern, six point star pattern over and over and over until this pressure plate is seated against the flywheel. Then you'll go with the torque wrench and torque them down in the same exact star pattern. And I'm gonna to torque them down to 22 foot-pounds. Once you have all the bolts tightened down, torqued, I wanna double check that this is super loose. Now we can put the transmission back in. Yay! You kinda of wanna clean out this a decent chunk. You don't have to go crazy, but at least make it halfway decent where it's not horrible garbage everywhere. Trying to remove the seals on both sides. The uh, puller you use needs to be a good brand because I bought a cheap one, I think from Harbor Freight, and it has like uh, two different kind of teeth on different angles, so you can pop it out uh, depending on what how big the seal is in that, right? But mine... I wasn't perfectly straight and the thing went a little sideways and boom, bent it. So, this right here is a carpenter one, which works as well. So you just put it in, you flop it out. This one was already loose, but it's the same thing. You do that on both sides, clean it all up nice with a rag, and then uh, we can pop in the new seals. For the seals, I got national seals. The 315 number here is the left side, which is from being inside the car looking. 
um, out towards the front. So left would be the engine side, driver side. So 315 is driver side. And 630 is passenger side. You're going to get this seal kit from AutoZone. Just rent it. 57119. You're going to use the letter E. And that will line up perfectly. So to do this, you hold it completely perpendicular, which means straight in relation to the transmission. You tap this side with a hammer and just slowly get it in until the edge here is flush with the case. Make sure you remember to lube this up with a little bit of that same grease that you're using for the shift fork just so you don't rip the brand new seals when you put the axles in for the first time. I'm going to use some of this Lucas Red and Tacky number 2 uh, 540 degree drop point grease in here which rides on here and then we're going to install this brand new throw out bearing. Make sure you clean the shaft really nice and this thing should be like butter on here. Should just slide nice and even and not catch up on anything. You just slide the forks into this throw up bearing like that. Just wraps around and then you push and then the little spring clip goes over the ball head and holds it in position. I'm going to use the same tacky red number two where the slave cylinder goes into this fork here. Uh, I don't want it to wear metal on metal. And there's a boot that goes over this anyways. This guy. So I'm going to put the red, red tacky number two in here. And then I'm going to put this back here where it's supposed to be. And then when I put the slave cylinder on, it'll be nice and lubed in here. Hopefully you liked this video. Hopefully it saved you some money. If it did, hit me up on Patreon. Dollar a month helps a lot more than you think it does. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and till next time, wrench on.